you guys. I was planning on posting this video without like any kind of preface or anything. I was just gonna post it and be done with it but at the same time I also feel like it's been um since the end of May since I posted anything and I felt like I at least owed you guys like a little bit of an explanation on my absence and where I've been. Um I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. First things first Working in retail during a global pandemic is um, interesting to say the least. And so having to deal with that and then at the end of May was when there was a lot of other general unrest that was happening. Um, I chose to take a back seat and amplify other voices that needed to be heard at that particular time because Black Lives Mattered then and they still matter now. Um, there will be resources and such in the down bar below for you to check out just in case you haven't checked those out in a while. That was one of the biggest reasons that I chose to take a backseat in what I had originally planned on being maybe two weeks worth of off time turned into a lot more. And there were a couple of different reasons for that. Number one, also, like I said, I work retail in the middle of a global pandemic. There was a lot of anxiety surrounding that. Um, we had to put down my family cats. Uh, my grandmother died. There were a lot of different things that were going on. And subsequently, this just, I could not dedicate the mental space to recording and editing and uploading. Um, but... I am hoping, which is weird since it's December and I work retail and this is like supposed to be so busy and it is busy, don't get me wrong, but I find that I'm in need of a little bit of a distraction and it's something that I really do miss. And I've been doing some things for myself in terms of mental health and really trying to get back to me and, and the things that I love. So that's why I'm coming back now, I guess. Like, I'm not fixing to say that I'm gonna upload every week because that's just not realistic. But I hope to actually start uploading content again um, here very shortly. I never stopped reading during that time. So like, I've always been reading. So as I was saying, um, hi, hello. Uh, if you're still subscribed, I'm sure that upon uploading this, there are a lot of people who have subscribed in my absence that will choose to unsubscribe, and that's okay. Um, so I'll probably lose some of y'all. For those of you that stuck around, for those of you that sent me really nice messages, like I so appreciate you so, so much. Um, those of you that have uh, checked in on me to make sure that I'm okay, um, thank you from the bottom of my heart because that really does mean a lot to me. But I'm really looking forward to being back. Um, if there are particular videos that you guys would want to see. Oh, you know what? If there, I read a lot of books that I didn't talk about and I'm not going to go through most of those books in all honesty, but would you guys like highlights from like specific genres um, or like a rapid wrap up where I do name every single book I read and like 10 seconds worth of a review or like how would you guys want that I don't know let me know in the comments down below um and without further ado let's just get into the actual content of this video thanks hey y'all welcome to my channel if you are new here my name is Samantha Leanne and I talk about books welcome to another edition of the King Chronicles where I am reading all of Stephen King's works in chronological order in case this is your first time here in these videos I discuss some fun facts about the book uh my general thoughts plot points, um, characters, as well as different themes, motifs, and as well as the connections to any previously published Stephen King works. One of the things that we're trying to do here is um, really see the Stephen King multiverse expand as his writing progresses. So today we are discussing different seasons and this is actually our first novella collection that we will be discussing. We have already talked about Night Shift, which was a short story collection, and that video looked a little bit different than most of our other videos. And this one will also look a little bit different as well because we are discussing multiple stories. So for that reason, in these particular stories, I'm not really going to go into super detail as far as characters, um, you know, and themes and things of that nature. So, you know, it's gonna be a little bit more condensed, but we are gonna discuss each story as a whole. 
So in discussing fun facts, we've already talked about this is our first novella collection. It was published in 1982 under Viking Press. I feel that it might go without saying, but we're gonna say it anyway. Um, the fact that this is called Different Seasons and it is a four novella collection, each of the stories does represent a different season. Imagine that. When you take a second and look at each of these stories, you know, Stephen King being known as a horror writer, none of these stories are really expressly horror. Each of them does have a certain amount of like horror elements, but I think that they would fall more under suspense. Um, and apparently at the time that these were published, there wasn't really a market for the novella. Um, you know, it was the big giant books, right? As such, King and his publisher decided to bind them all together into a collection and like do something different and see how it did. Okay, so we are just going to jump directly into this. Uh, we are going to start with Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption. The byline of this one is Hope Springs Eternal, obviously representing spring. Apparently, this is a story that is roughly based on a Tolstoy story, um, God Sees the Truth But Waits. I personally have never read any Tolstoy in my life, so there's that. Part of me, upon learning that little fact, wanted to find that story and read it, and then the other part of me remembered the trouble that I had with Anna Karenina, and I was like, mm, I think I'm gonna pass. <laughs> From the research that I did, uh, the way that King sort of did his novellas is he would pump out a full-fledged novel and then he would write like a shorter novella like in the interim just I guess to give himself a break from the longer novels I guess. Um, but this particular short story was actually written after he had finished writing The Stand. I do feel like this is probably one of his more well-known stories just because of the film that is associated with it. It does star Morgan Freeman and uh, I can't remember the other guy's name. Timothy somebody, I think. I think that the film is really excellent and it actually is a pretty true adaptation to the novella itself. One of the things that I did forget to mention earlier when we were talking about fun facts is the fact that each of these novellas does have a film that corresponds to it with the exception of I think The Breathing Method, which I'll discuss that when we inevitably get there. But I do like the fact that this is the story for spring just because it does have like this like hopeful feel to it and like the resilience of like the human spirit. So I do feel like it was appropriate in that way. I think that this, if we're gonna rank these stories, and I'm talking about them in the order in which they appear in the book, by the way, I do think that this is probably my second favorite of the collection, so. The next story is Apt Pupil or The Summer of Corruption. And boy oh boy, is this like really a summer of corruption. I would say that this is probably my least favorite in the collection, if we're being honest. This one was written after King had finished The Shining, so it was fairly early on in his career. And the basic plot of this is, you know, boy becomes absolutely obsessed with a Nazi that's in his neighborhood and like blackmails him and various other things. I don't like the story for a multitude of reasons, one of which being is there's a significant amount of like animal abuse, which I know personally caused several people to just completely DNF the story, so it is really gruesome in that regard. This is one that was also made into a film, which I've never seen, but I have been told is actually really terrible. So maybe one day I'll watch it just, you know, to compare, but I don't know why I'd want to put myself through that if I didn't even like the book, but it's fine. The next story in this collection is The Body or Fall from Innocence. This is definitely my favorite story within the collection. This story is about a group of kids who come from abusive families. It's various kids, but they all come from abusive families in some regard. And one of the kids finds out that there's a dead body somewhere of like a classmate or something that's gone missing. So the boys decide that they are going to go and find this body, hence the name, The Body. This is the first time that we have seen a group of children, a group of younger children in King's writing. And I would argue that this is kind of like the beginning of the Losers Club, that he really got that practice of like that friend dynamic that we see in later works like it. This is also a Castle Rock story, which by the way, Shawshank is also a Castle Rock story. So that's a thing, um, which are Castle Rock stories up until this point have been Cujo and the Dead Zone. Like I said, all these kids are from this tiny town uh, that doesn't really have much to offer and they all come from really terrible households. 
the way that this one is written is actually very interesting to me because of the way that the story is told. So it's being told from one of the kids that's in this friend group from his perspective, but it's being told years later as an adult. And so as he's like flashing back to, you know, these experiences and, and this thing that happened, he's also an author now, um, which we were just starting to sort of see the beginnings of uh, within the flashback stories. So it's like a framed story, I guess you would call this. So, you know, you have your main story, which is like what's going on and what's happening and them going to find the body, but then he'll also stop and tell his friends like these, these stories that he's written. And so you have, you know, the background information from the older person, you have the flashbacks of them going to find the body and then you have stories inside that. And so at times it can get a little bit muddled, um, but I, still really enjoyed it. It's definitely a coming of age story. It's definitely about like, you know, confronting getting older and like those, those truths of getting older, as well as them really confronting the reality of death um, as seen in the scenes where they actually do find the body. Those are like very poignant and, you know, like very, and just like very well done. Honestly, that's, that's the only way that I can think to do them. But this, story was adapted into the film Stand By Me, which is an excellent film. I think that it's Stand By Me and the Shawshank films are really, really good. Um, I think that they're very good in their own right. I'm not going to say one's better than the other because I do really enjoy both of them. I think that the popularity of Stand By Me, I think that film a lot of people are familiar with, but I don't think as many people are familiar with the fact that it is an adaptation of a King novella. Uh, I think more people are familiar with the Shawshank novella than the body. And the last story in this collection is The Breathing Method or A Winter's Tale. Uh, this one felt a little bit different than the rest of the stories in this collection. It's, it's a bit weird and I think that that has to do with the setting and just the overall feel of the story itself, which I think was intentional. You know, I think that that's important to the overall atmosphere of the story. So this is also a frame tale. So you have this guy who I can't remember who he is if I'm being 100% honest with you but he's in like this weird gentleman's club it's like very generic but also weird and he's telling the story of the breathing method so it's about a doctor who's in his 30s and he has a patient she's an unwed mother she's absolutely determined to keep her baby uh you know she sees him throughout the duration of her pregnancy and learns his breathing method you know like similar to like Lamaze breathing or whatever i assume whenever you go to give birth basically in the story she goes into labor she calls a taxi her taxi gets in an accident she is decapitated but the doctor ends up on the scene but her body is still like doing the thing that mothers do you know, and still like doing the breathing method. Uh, so her baby is delivered safely and he, st he like thinks that he can like hear her thank him even though the body doesn't have a head. It's very strange. This one has not yet been adapted to my knowledge. I think that the rights have been sold to this story, but I don't think that it's actually been adapted yet. I will say that the, the gentleman's club itself that, that you're at, does it's very strange like there's no name brands of anything like there's no nothing it almost feels like an alternate reality but I mean aside from that I don't really have much to say about this story I think that it's literally just like a spooky tale like spooky weird tale you know I don't think that there's necessarily like a super deep dark meaning to it kind of like how there is you know a lot of meaning in the body of course there's probably meaning to this and I just don't see it but it's fine obviously we're not going to talk about characters which is what we would usually do within this section, um, you know, because this is a novella collection and we're not going to discuss individual themes and motifs either. But we are going to talk about connections. So as I previously said, the body is a Castle Rock story. So there's our first connection because we've seen Castle Rock in The Dead Zone and in Cujo. Actually, um, Shawshank and Apt Pupil have a connection within themselves. That connection being that Andy Dufresne who is our main character in Shawshank, actually set up a like stock portfolio or financial portfolio for Dusander in Apt Pupil. 
Another connection that we see, which is interesting because Apt Pupil was written right after The Shining, is that one of Dusander's uh, aliases, the last name is uh, Denker, I think, is actually the headmaster's name from Jack Torrance's short story in The Shining, or his play, sorry, his play in The Shining. Another connection that we have is within the short story of the body, they do directly reference Shawshank. And those are really the only connections that I could find. This is just like a reminder as well whenever we talk about connections is that I am looking at previously published works whenever I'm talking about um, connections. So while a lot of these stories that we're talking about have connections in works that we haven't gotten to yet, I'm not going to like get ahead of us because the whole purpose of this is to really see the universe as it expands, right? So I've read a lot of Stephen King's work as of this point. And as I go through and make connections, a lot of times I'll find, I'll, I'll see something and I'm like, oh, that was referenced in, you know, this particular story that's like way down the line. I choose not to talk about those things because to me, it's important to see the connections as they develop, right? Because as we get further and further in, you'll start seeing more and more things pop up. Especially once we get into the Dark Tower universe and, and that sort of thing, there's a lot of connections um, within the Dark Tower universe to you know previously published works. From here, we're going to talk about, I believe our next one is The Running Man. Yes. So we're going to talk about The Running Man and then from there um, we'll talk about The Gunslinger will be our next two. So I'm really looking forward to talking about The Gunslinger. So, But that's all I have for you guys today. Again, this video looked a little bit different. I didn't go as far into detail as I sometimes do within our King Chronicles. That just being because it is a novella collection. With novellas being a little bit more condensed, um, you know, there isn't as much content there to like really analyze like we do in some of the other novels but yeah so what is your favorite story from different seasons comment down below and let me know also i'm interested to see what books are you guys most excited to see me talk about as we continue the series i'm very glad that you guys are enjoying these as much as you are so if this is your first time here hi hello and welcome this is a series where i talk about the stephen king books that i'm reading or that i have read in order um, I will link the playlist up above so that you can peruse at your leisure to see what books we have discussed up until this point. That's all I have for you guys today. If this is your first time here, like I said, if you like what you see and you want to see more, you can click thumbs up. You can click subscribe if you haven't already. And then you can also click the little bell doodad to be notified of any of my videos videos. Uh, you can also connect with me on Twitter, Goodreads, and Instagram. All my social media links are found in the down bar below. Um, thank you guys so very much for watching and I will see y'all next time in my next video or whatever or if you're just here for King Chronicles, I'll see you guys whenever we discuss The Running Man. Thank y'all for watching. Bye.